Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Physiology Learning. In today's session, we are going to see about proprioceptors and spinal reflexes. We are discussing under our CNS lecture, wherein we are discussing the sensory system, wherein the proprioceptors comes under the sensory system. And since the spinal reflexes are a part of this proprioceptor reflex, we are discussing them together here. This proprioceptors are responsible for the spinal reflexes. So, coming to the learning objective of today, we are going to discuss about two important proprioceptors that is the muscle spindle and Golgi tendon organ. This muscle spindle and the Golgi tendon organ, they are responsible for some of the reflexes in the body. Muscle spindle is responsible for the stretch reflex and the withdrawal reflex, whereas the Golgi tendon organ is responsible for the inverse stretch reflex. So, let us try to understand all of them today. So, coming into the topic. So, what is the location of a muscle spindle and the Golgi tendon organ? This GTO is nothing but a Golgi tendon organ. So, whenever we talk about a muscle fiber, what happens is there is a group of muscle which is helping in the actual contraction of the muscle. And inside the muscle, there are some receptors which are located deep inside the muscle. They are called the proprioceptors. So, the muscle fibers which are actual contracting the muscle is the extra fusal fibers which are also called as the muscle fibers and deep inside the muscle fiber there is one important proprioceptor which is just parallel to the extra fusal fiber which is also called as intrafusal fiber this is our muscle spindle which we are talking about the proprioceptor then coming to the location of golgi tendon organ as you can see here this Golgi tendon organ is located in the extrafusal fiber. They are located in the tendinous ends of the extrafusal fiber. So, coming to the muscle spindle, the structure of muscle spindle looks like this, wherein there is a group of fiber which is located at the center, which is also called as nuclear back fiber. The property of this nuclear back fiber is it involves in both static as well as dynamic sensors. So, basically they are going to sense the both at the static state as well as the dynamic state. What is static state? At rest, whatever length is there, it can be detected by them. And what is dynamic sensors? Dynamic sensors means they can detect the whenever the muscle is in a movement. So, both can be done by the nuclear back fibers. And another group of fibers which look like a chain here are called as nuclear chain fibers. These nuclear chain fibers are little less efficient and they detect only the static state of the muscle. Then coming to the afferents and efferents from the muscle spindle. Coming to the afferents from the nuclear back fibers as well as the nuclear chain fibers, one important afferent goes in which is called as the 1A fibers. 1A fibers. This is also called as annulospiral ending because they look like as if they are spiraling the nuclear black as well as the nuclear chain fibers. This is the most important afferent from a muscle spindle unit. Then coming to one more afferent which looks like a flower spray ending. As you can see here, the flower spray ending. These flower spray ending also are called as type 2 fibers and they carry only from the nuclear chain fibers. And coming to the afferent of a muscle spindle which is A gamma fibers. This A gamma fibers is the only efferent for the muscle spindle. This A gamma fiber, as you can see here, they are innervating the ends of the muscle spindle. This A gamma fibers are also very, very important for a maneuver called as Gendra 6 maneuver, which we will discuss in a while. So, this is the structure of a muscle spindle. We have to remember the afferent, which is 1A, and the efferent, that is the gamma fibers. So, coming to the muscle spindle, the muscle spindle, it is nothing but a small encapsulated sense organ, which we discussed now, and it is either spindle in shape or fusiform shape structure. And what are the essential elements we, ju we just saw now? One is the intrafusal muscle fiber is there, and it has the myelinated afferent nerve fibers, which is type 1A and type 2 fibers, and the efferent nerve, which supplies only the contractile region of the, or the ends of the intrafusal fiber, which is our gamma fibers. Before going into the discussion of uh, reflexes, we have to know a one concept called as the reflex arc. Let us try to understand what is a reflex arc. This reflex arc is nothing but a basic unit of an integrated reflex activity. So, if any reflex is there, there has to be a reflex arc which is integrating the reflex. So, the, what are the components of a reflex arc? 
as you can see here, there should be a sense organ. For example, whenever you are doing all the reflexes or the stress reflexes that we perform while examining the patients like the deep tendon reflexes, all of them are nothing but the component of reflex act. Basically, what all the elements of reflex act? They will have a sensory organ and there will be an afferent neuron, afferent neuron which is carrying the sensation from here to the spinal cord and there will be a synapse and there will be an efferent neuron and finally they will go to the neuromuscular junction and innervate the muscle which is an effector. So, these are the components of a reflex arc and depending upon the number of synapses present, we call them as monosynaptic or polysynaptic reflex. So, what is the difference between a monosynaptic and a polysynaptic reflex? Mono as the term indicates it is one. If there is only one synapse, it is we are going to call it monosynaptic reflex. The reflex arc with single synapse between the afferent and efferent neurons is called as the monosynaptic reflex. The example for this is the stretch reflex. Whatever stretch reflex we are doing, that is a deep tendon reflex, biceps, triceps, knee jerk, ankle jerk, all of them are the components of stretch reflex. Whenever there are multiple interneurons or multiple synapses, these synapses can number from two even they can go up to 100. Whenever there are multiple interneurons, we refer to them as polysynaptic reflex. And classical example is withdrawal reflex. As you can see from these diagrams, in the first one, there is only one synapse between the afferent and efferent. Whereas in the second example, there is an interneuron, so there it is making two synapses. Whenever there are multiple synapses, they will be called as polysynaptic reflexes and whenever there is a single synapse, they will be called as monosynaptic reflex. Now, coming to the most important concept that is the stretch reflex. What is stretch reflex? This stretch reflex is also called as myotactic reflex. Whenever a skeletal muscle with an intact nerve supply is stretched, it is going to contract the muscle. It is very simple as that. So, what we are doing whenever we are doing a reflex, we are going to hit our knee hammer on the tendon and this is going to cause a stretch which reflexly contracts the muscle on which the stretch is produced. So, this is what is all about stretch reflex. So, what is the component of it? So, whenever there is a stretch, they will be sensed by our intrafusal fibers. And this intrafusal fiber, what is the afferent? Yes, very right. It is our 1A fibers. They are going to carry it to the spinal cord. And since this stretch reflex is a monosynaptic reflex, it is going to synapse at only one place. And there is a central delay of just 0.6 to 0.8. 8 milliseconds. It is going to be very fast because there is only one synapse. So, the central delay is very, very low. And what they will do is they will give their innovation to the efferent which is nothing but our alpha motor neurons. This alpha motor neurons, see the diagram carefully, it is going and innovating the which fibers? Intra or extra fusal? It is innovating the extra fusal fibers. So, what is the function of the extra fusal fibers? They are going to contract if they are stimulated. So, this alpha motor neuron is going to cause the contraction of the muscle. And as we have seen here, the stretch reflex is a form of monosynaptic reflex and the classical example is a knee jerk reflex. So, coming to the next reflex which is the withdrawal reflex. This withdrawal reflex is a form of polysynaptic reflex. What do we understand by polysynaptic reflex? They are going to be multiple synapses. In stretch reflex, it is going and contracting the agonist muscle. For example, alpha motor neurons, they are going to innervate and cause the contraction of the agonist muscle of like the biceps, if there is a contraction in the muscle. Whereas, in polysynaptic reflex, what it is going to do is, it will contract the agonist muscle as well as it will relax the antagonist muscle. In this case, for example, like suppose if you are touching something hot, what we have to do? We have to reflexly withdraw it. So, we have to protect ourselves from that hot environment. So, what we are doing? We are contracting the biceps as well as at the same time the triceps is getting relaxed. So, this is a part of withdrawal reflex. So, it is a form of protective response and as you can see here, it will give fibers to the contracting muscle as well as it will give an interneuron to the muscles which will cause the relaxation of the extensors. So, this is very very important. It is causing contraction of the flexors and inhibiting the extensors. So, it helps in withdrawal from the stimulus. Sometimes, whenever the stimulus is very strong, what we are going to do? Suppose you are touching or pricking very, very strong stimulus is there. 
we have to withdraw our hand at the same time the other side of the body is going to support by extending the arm so this is also called as crossed extensor response so along with the above action what is happening is this extension of the opposite limb will happen this extension of the opposite limb why it has to happen because it is going to support the body from falling down so this reflex is also called as crossed extensor reflex which is also a example of polysynaptic reflex now we have seen the effects of all the afferents going from the muscle spindle that is our intrafusal fiber one efferent was coming to the muscle spindle what is that efferent it is nothing but our gamma motor neurons so what is the function of this gamma motor neurons what they do is see this diagram whenever there is impulse from the gamma motor neuron they have going to contract the ends of the intrafusal fiber so whenever the intrafusal ends are contracted like they are contracting so what will happen to the central part the central part is going to be a stretch debit whenever there is a stretch it is going to activate which fibers ultimately it is going to activate the 1a fibers if 1a fibers are activated wherein they can cause the contraction they can cause the contraction of the muscle by the activation of alpha motor neuron so the activation of gamma motor neuron it is indirectly activating the stretch reflex so what can we say from it we can say that whenever there is an activity of gamma motor neuron discharge it is going to increase the sensitivity of the stretch reflex because this gamma motor will cause the contraction of the intrafusal fiber ends and they are going to stretch the muscle spindle wherein the 1a fibers can get activated that's why before calling any reflex as absent we always ask the patient to do some maneuvers like clenching of teeth or pulling his hands apart why do we ask them to do it these activities increase the gamma motor neuron discharge so only after this the reflex is not coming we label it as absent so if the reflex is present with genera 6 maneuver we write it as reflex present with reinforcement we are trying to do some reinforcement and trying to elicit the reflex that is c so this gamma motor neuron it forms the basis of genera 6 maneuver that we do in our reflex examination and there is one more strong relationship between the alpha and gamma motor neurons it is also called as alpha gamma coactivation sometimes what happens is the descending excitatory input from the brain region what they will do is they will come to the descending areas and they will activate both the gamma motor as well as the alpha motor so already when the gamma motor activity is increased the alpha motor activity is going to increase naturally because of the 1a fibers so this type of coactivation between both of them is called as alpha gamma coactivation here what happens is both the intrafusal and the extrafusal fibers they are going to shorten together so this helps in an increased reflex activity coming to the next proprioceptor that is our golgi tendon organ and this is responsible for inverse stretch reflex we have seen stretch reflex what is stretch reflex stretch reflex is when the muscle is stretch it is going to contract what is inverse stretch reflex it is just the inverse of it whenever the muscle is stretch too much then it is going to relax why this has to be there because this reflex will help us to prevent the muscle from avulsion if there is too much stretch i don't want the muscle to get avulsed and torn so ultimately this reflex prevents the muscle from getting avulsed from the bone how does it happen we have seen that the golgi tendon organ are located in the tendinous ends of the extrafusal fibers please may remember that the golgi tendon organ is located in the extrafusal fiber and when they are stimulated they are going to activate 1b afferents and this 1b afferent has the tendency to inhibit the alpha motor neuron you might ask what is the reason why normally golgi tendon organ is not activated by a normal stimulus it needs a strong stimulus the sensitivity of golgi tendon organ is very very low so it needs a strong stimulus to activate the golgi tendon organ and this is one of the very very important protective reflex seen in the body i hope it's clear coming to the take home points what all things we have seen today the muscle spindle is responsible for both the stretch reflex as well as the withdrawal reflex and stretch reflex is an example of monosynaptic reflex whereas withdrawal reflex is an example of polysynaptic reflex then coming to the golgi tendon organ it is responsible for the inverse stretch reflex and which fibers are responsible for the genera 6 maneuver it is our gamma motor neuron discharge 
This topic is very very important. Make sure to revise it once or twice. Thank you for listening. I hope to see you in the next video. If you like my content, please do subscribe it and share it with your friends. Thank you again.